This is the seacoast town of Herzliya that lies on the Mediterranean Sea just north of Tel Aviv, Israel. The home of 25-year-old Yael Arad, the most revered athlete Israel has ever produced. She is ranked amongst the foremost women judo players in the world and favored to win a medal at the Barcelona Olympics. Yael Arad has dedicated her performance to the memory of her countrymen who died in Munich. If she wins a medal, history will be made. It will be the first medal Israel has won since they first competed at the Olympics 40 years ago in Helsinki. When I was a child, you know, there was pictures in the, in the newspapers, they talked about it, there was a movie that they made about it. But uh, as I become an Olympic sport player, you know, I thought about it. Then I started to realize how important it is to, to show the world, you know, that we are here. Even though our best 11 sport players have been murdered, so we're still here, we're still winning, we're still, we can still be the best. Judo for men was introduced at the Olympics at the 1964 Tokyo Games. In 1988 in Seoul, it was a demonstration sport for women. Now at the Barcelona Games, women for the first time will compete for medals. 13 times national champion and undefeated at home since she was nine, Yael Arad had difficulty getting partners. Often she would work out with Israeli head women's coach Daniel Leopold and members of the men's team. In Israel we don't have enough judo players in high levels. Since I was a kid to train with the boys, but I like it. I like to train with boys uh, because with the boys they are much stronger than me. Physically you can't help it even though I'm quite strong. So here I train with the boys and there when I go to Japan or to Europe I train only with girls. Six months before the Barcelona Olympics, Yael Arad let it be known that she would be a strong contender for championship honors in the 134 and a half pound weight division. In the prestigious Paris Open, she defeated France's world champion Catherine Fleury in the semi-final, a prelude to her winning the overall championship. One of the great moments that I had was to win the Tournoi de Paris, the Paris tournament. I won there in the first place. And uh, in front of 6,000 people, they played my anthem. And I knew I'm the best for that moment. And of course, it was uh, six months before the Olympic Games, so it gave me a lot of credit and uh, it helped me to, for my spirit, you know. A few months before the Games, she had orthoscopic surgery on her right knee, the result of a training injury. Then, just before leaving for Barcelona, there were remembrances of the past. She would meet with some of the families of the 11 Israeli Olympians killed by the terrorists 20 years ago. Yael Arad would dedicate her performance to the memory of her martyred countrymen. It was her initiative. She called me. We spent a couple of hours here and we sent her on the way with our best wishes. And I must admit also with fear in my heart because I, I know, I remembered very well what happened to my husband. I was the same age as she was. He was one of the uh, 11 sportsmen that went to Munich to participate in the Olympic Games in 1972. I'm sure that he and I didn't expect that he would be coming home in a, in a casket. So I think that people should be reminded only for one reason, that this should never happen again. It is Thursday, July 30th. The judo competition is about to get underway. 29 women are entered in the 134 and a half pound weight division. In the preliminary rounds, Yael Arad is superb. In her first bout, she defeats Bagonia Gomez of Spain. A half hour later, she wins again, defeating Miroslava Janoskova of Czechoslovakia. Now in the semi-final, she will meet one of her great rivals for top honors, Frauke Imke Eikhoff of Germany, the reigning world champion. Eikhoff is the favorite of many to win the gold medal. For Yael Arad, the bout has double meaning. If she wins, she will then be a finalist for the gold medal. Equally significant, a victory will assure Israel its first medal since they first entered the games 40 years ago. I knew it would be the toughest mat I will, I'll ever, I will ever have. I got a punch or something in my head, 
because my head was in the mat. And uh, she also hold me. And if you hold for 30 seconds, it's, it's Ippon, it's like knockout. Those seconds that you hold me, I couldn't think about anything because my head was really so painful. Rolling over on her stomach, Yael Arad breaks the hold, staving off defeat. The referee calls the Japanese word mate, wait, stop the action, go back to your places and start again. Yael Arad has survived to fight on. The bout resumes. Though in great pain, Yael Arad scores heavily with a near-perfect throw. She receives seven points from the officials. A second throw of this type will be the equivalent of an Ippon, a knockout. And I knew I have to be prepared because she will get crazy. She knows now I'm going to win. I'm in a better position. I have uh, seven points and she knows now she's coming to kill me. Though still stunned from her injury, Yael Arad again puts Eikhoff on her back. The German champion quickly recovers and turns Arad over, but it is too late. Yael Arad's near-perfect throw has won the match. Eikhoff celebrates unaware the match was declared over before her throw. Then she realizes that she has been defeated. Only the replay can show what has occurred. First, Yael Arad's near-perfect throw. Right here, the bout is over. Yael Arad has won the match. She has made it to the final. Even more, win or lose, she is assured of winning Israel's first Olympic medal ever. You stand there, you did it, not just for yourself, for your country, for the people around, you know. These 250 people that were there with the flags, they were a symbol for me, you know. It was the whole country there. For me and, uh, and then suddenly I realized, you know, we must stop this celebration. You still have to win the final. One hour later, the final, the match for the gold medal. Yael Arad's opponent, Catherine Fleury of France, who she defeated in the semi-final six months earlier at the Paris Open. I know Fleury for many years. She was a world champion, a European champion, but I knew I'm better. I can win this fight. For four full minutes, Yael Arad and Catherine Fleury dart and probe each other, looking for the move that would mean victory. But it is not to be. Neither woman scores any points. When the time had elapsed, the winner must be decided by the two judges and referee. The judges split their vote, one for each woman. The referee points toward Catherine Fleury. The gold medal is hers. Yael Arad is the winner of the silver medal. But with this historic performance, there was disappointment. She would not hear the Israeli national anthem here in Barcelona. To get there to the Olympic Games, to get into the final, to win all your matches, to give a good final, then to lose by decision, you know, it's, it's really hard, hard to take it. I was standing there on the podium, you know, all the crowd there, my crowd was shouting for me. And uh, I won the first medal to Israel, and I was crying, you know, I just, I couldn't handle it. Yael Arad returns to Israel to a hero's welcome. Thousands greeted her at the airport, and days of celebration began. Yael Arad had done what no Israeli athlete had ever done. Finally, when all the joy of what took place has subsided, Yael Arad would fulfill the promise she made before she left for the Barcelona Olympic Games. She visits the monument created in memory of her countrymen who died in Munich that terrible September day 20 years ago. Said Yael Arad, 20 years ago when I was five years old, marvelous athletes whom I did not know left to compete in the Olympic Games for the honor and glory of sport. They did not return to their country or to their loved ones. I've been given the honor of again letting the world know that they lived and to let the world know that we are still here, that we will always be here. We have reached one of the highest steps of the victory podium of sport, a symbol to all the world. 
that what happened should never happen again.